To begin chuck disassembly, you must remove the three screws holding on the chuck cover. The lever to open the chuck will lock it for turning to help hold while you take screws off the front. After removing the screws, pull the cap off and set it aside. Get your disassembly tool that came with the machine. Installing the disassembly tool just enough to fully engage the screw threads into the chuck. Then open the center all the way and be sure the discs are straight. Use a socket with the chuck locked and hand tighten the center bolt of the tool. Double check to make sure that your screws are engaged several threads. And to repeat, make sure that the disc is parallel to the other disc. At this point, you can remove the chuck yoke. Using an Allen wrench, remove the center bolt and be aware that there is a sleeve inside the yoke that could fall out on you. It's good to keep the yellow mark to the top. Now reverse the tool out to take the tension off the chuck spring. The original setting of the disassembly tool was to hold the chuck spring in place. Once you've released the tension from the spring, you can remove the disassembly tool. The first chuck collar will slide off with some difficulty. While pulling, use a wiggle action to get it to come off. Be aware that the chuck balls will fall out as you pull off the collar. The piece that rides behind the front collar, if left in place, will hold the balls in the chuck so they don't fall out. While pulling the chuck collars off, the most tight area will be the end of the shaft as you pull the collars off. As you can see here, it's not the easiest thing to get them off. Our tolerances are very tight. You can use the chuck cover turned upside down to hold the balls on the bench. The last thing is to remove the spline pulley called the chuck hand wheel off the end. Chuck shaft would then slide out.
You may need to loosen the saddle bearings, but that usually is not necessary. Now we'll reassemble. During reassembly, you'll use automatic transmission fluid for lubrication. Use plenty out on the end of the shaft. You'll just reverse the process that we just did to disassemble. First by sliding the chuck in the saddles and installing the hand wheel splined pulley. Making sure that you have no lateral movement of the chuck shaft in the saddle bearings. The first item to slide on is the spring support ring. Note that there is an indentation in the center of the ring which goes towards the back of the chuck when you slide it on. We can't stress enough that automatic transmission fluid is your secret weapon. It lubricates without leaving any kind of residue. You want to rub the balls in your hand feeling for any grit and be sure they are clean. Put the two balls in the upper holes first. Next, slide the spring on, making sure the yellow is up. Slide the first collar on with the keyway up, and the keys in the shaft also should be up as shown. The yellow mark on the spring being up helps the coils of the spring to be out of the way of you installing the balls with the spring on. Once again, you'll see it's not easy at the end of the shaft to start the collars on. A good method is holding on to the hand wheel while wiggling the shaft. Turning sometimes helps. Slide the first collar on with the keyway up. Once you get close to the keys, install the other two balls in the back before sliding the collar further onto the shaft to capture the balls in place. You may need to turn the spring slightly to gain access to one of the ball holes. You can see here how he's turned the spring a little bit to give access. Now we're sliding the collar over the keys and that holds the balls in place. Make sure that the keys are inside that first collar before moving on. The next collar with the little springs goes on and it will capture the balls for you. You should not have to remove those little springs for cleaning. And as always, more lubrication is a good idea. Using both hands, one to hold the spline pulley, and again using a wiggling action and making sure the keyway is up. Get it started without worrying about the keyway at first. Once it's on the shaft, you can turn it to line it up with the keyways and the keys. Be very careful not to push the keys out of position. You should not ever have to remove those keys. As you can see from this video, it's not always just the shaft that is the problem. 
In this case, one of the balls has come out of the hole far enough to prevent the collar from moving forward. And it's a bit of a struggle to get that ball back into place so that the collar can continue to slide on. As you push in, you'll feel the keyway start. Once you get it lined up, be sure it's slipping over the key. It takes a pretty good amount of pressure because you have to slightly compress the spring in order to be over the keys and know you're over the keys. Being careful not to push the keys out of their position. Once you have it sliding over the keys, let off of the collar and do not move it or allow it to change position. This is important because if it gets moved from this position even a little, the next step will push the keys out and force you to remove all parts and start over. Now install the disassembly tool to compress the spring and slide the collar back over the set of balls. Once it feels like it's getting tight, stop and recheck that all keyways are lined up and the collars are moving over the keys without kicking them up. A socket wrench works best for this operation. While you're compressing the spring, you're also watching to make sure that your keys aren't moving. If it looks like your collars are off, adjust them. As you compress the spring, it will feel tight. And it's possible at some point to get the disassembly tool fully expanded. Of course, you can't go any further at that point, but that should be far enough. Now you reinstall the chuck yoke. Putting the bolt through the center sleeve that the chuck yoke pivots on. Using your Allen wrench, tighten it down tight. The yoke should still move freely. To remove the disassembly tool, the chuck needs to be held open with the air at first. Once the tool is loose, release the air and then remove the three screws from the chuck. Activating the chuck yoke with the air button holds the chuck in place while you remove the tool. Now the final step is to reinstall the chuck cover. Line up the holes and start the screws by hand.
Once you have the screw started, it can be helpful to hold the screwdriver still while spinning the chuck to run them down. Once all three screws are tight, test your operation and then with the chuck open, the air button depressed, verify that your screws are fully tight on the cover. Without the chuck held open, the spring tension might make you think you have them all the way engaged. Once everything is assembled, you may want to go through the saddle bearing adjustments as described in the machine manual. The last bit of business you should do is test the chuck for runout.